This is the OTB Network. Hello everyone and welcome to Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We have some exciting racing to bring to you from around the country today and we're going to kick things right off down in South Florida with Calder Racecourse's William L. McKnight Handicap, a grade two event run on Saturday that offers $150,000 purse for three-year-olds and up going a mile and a half on the turf course. Let's head down to Calder now for the call of Saturday's McKnight Handicap. And they're off in the W.L. McKnight Handicap. To the inside, Special Coach is first to show and opens up a length. It's Unite's Big Red moving up second. And to the inside, it's a Musical Ghost moving up on the far outside. That Saint Sunset, half length back to the hedge. That's White Cappy, another length back. It's Just Listen. Then toward the far outside, it's the Kaiser between horses, a little luck. Length back to the hedge comes Gimme Steam, then three more lengths. Thesaurus, a length back to the outside, it's King's Jewel, and a length and a half to Gritty Sandy. They went the first quarter in 24 seconds flat. They come past the quarter pole for the first time. On the inside, it's Special Coach leading by a length. In second position, it's St. Sunset. Then two lengths back to the outside. Musical Ghost with Unite's Big Red outside of him. Tucked in at the hedge, that's White Cappy. Another length back, it's Just Listen. Outside of Just Listen comes a little luck. A length back on the far outside, it's the Kaiser. Then a length and a half to Gimme Steam. Two more lengths to Thesaurus. Then to the outside, King's Jewel. And a length and a half back, Gritty Sandy continues to trail. They went to half in 48 and 1. The pace is good for this mile and a half endurance race. On the inside, it's Special Coach leading by a length. To the outside, that's St. Sunset second. Another length back toward the outside. That's Unite's Big Red moving up. Then from between horses comes Musical Ghost to the inside. It's White Cappy. Half length back, that's a Gimme Steam. Another half length to the outside. It's a little luck. Then it's a length and a half back to the Kaiser. To the outside, it's King's Jewel. Then at the rail, that's Just Listen. Another length back to the inside. That's the Saurus with Gritty Sand. Andy. They went the mile in 137 and 3 after three quarters and 112 and 3, and they come around the stretch turn for the final time. On the inside, that's a Special Coach. Moving on the outside to challenge, it's uh, Unites Big Red with Musical Ghost between horses. They come to the quarter pole. On the inside, Special Coach. On the outside, Musical Ghost, their heads apart. Another length and a half back to the outside, Unites Big Red. Down the middle of the course, it's a little luck. They move to the eighth pole. On the outside, Just Listen splits horses and comes on and gets the lead to the inside that special coach length back to the outside white cappy finds room and comes on next they come to deep stretch it's just listen he's gonna upset the wl mcknight handicap and win it by three and a half a copy getting the win here on the disqualification of just listen just listen crossing the finish length line three lengths to the best of the field was disqualified and placed ninth after causing some interference with musical ghost in the stretch. Wikapi moved up to the win here, a very hard knocking older gelding down on the South Florida circuit, been doing very well for quite some time down there. Running in the second spot, or finishing in the third spot, moved into the second spot. Front running special coach, he's shown the way in a number of the turf stakes races throughout this year, has had a hard time holding on, but has generally been very game in the stretch and moved into the third spot. King's Jewel under Abdel Taribio, a ground saving trip uh, early, making a huge move late, but not able to gain any more than that ground on the leader. The winner, Wakapi, a seven-year-old Dark Bayer Brown gelding sired by Wakoit, was bred in Maryland. He is owned by the acclaimed racing stable trained by Joseph Colasaveta, ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez getting the mile and a half on the turf course at Calder, which was labeled good for Saturday's racing, in 2 minutes 26 and 1 fifth seconds. Sunday at Calder, the featured event was the Kenny No Junior Stakes. This was $100,000 for three-year-olds and upgoing seven furlongs on the main track. Let's head back to South Florida now for the call of Sunday's Kenny No Junior. And they're off in the Kenny No Junior Handicap. And on the far outside, 
That's a salty sea breaking sharply. Now it's a stormy dew that moves up to challenge for the lead toward the inside. Crafty friend ranges up into the first flight. They leave the chute, move on to the main track. On the outside, that's stormy dew at the rail. It's crafty friend. Then it's a length and a half back toward the outside. It's deep gold. Half length to the rail, mountaintop. Then to the outside, it's Irish conquest. Half length back, thrill and discovery. And four lengths to salty sea. They went the first quarter in 20. 22 and 2 and they leave the half mile pole on the inside it's crafty friend on the outside stormy do their heads apart length and a half back that's mountain top third then to the outside it's deep gold length back to thrill and discovery another length and a half irish conquest and then his stable mate salty sea the half in 45 and 2 there's going to be a quarter of a mile to go in the kenny no junior handicap and they've got Stormy due to catch. He leads by a length. Crafty friend on the inside is beginning to weaken. Down the middle of the track, that's a mountaintop coming on at the far outside. Thrill and discovery. Widest of all, it's deep gold. They move to the 16th pole. Stormy due. Thrill and discovery on the outside between a mountaintop. They come to the wire at the rail. Stormy due. Thrill and discovery. Mountaintop. Thrill and discovery. He's up in time. He takes the Kenny No Jr. handicap. Thrill and Discovery and a little bit of an upset here over Mountain Top. Thrill and Discovery getting a neck win over the hard knocking Mountain Top, a horse we've seen a number of times here in New York. After uh, both of those two chased the early pace of Stormy Dew, favorite in here, uh, Crafty Friend was was uh, was vying for the lead with Stormy Dew, faded rather badly into the sixth spot after having been very competitive in New York earlier in the year. Stormy Dew was able to hold on for third. Thrill and Discovery was uh, reserved behind horses as you saw early angled out a bit at the top of the stretch by Javier Castellano making a huge move and getting up for the neck win at six to one mountaintop holding on very nicely for third after being in a stalking position throughout the winner thrill and discovery is a brown is a gray or roan gelding he's four years old sired by alaskan frost he was bred in florida he's owned by the 3g stable and trained by luis olivares getting the win under javier castellano the final time for seven furlongs one minute 23 and three fifth seconds next we're going to be heading up to laurel where on saturday the featured event was the hail emperor stakes a fifty thousand dollar event for three-year-olds and up going a mile and three sixteenths on the main track. Let's head to Laurel for the call of Saturday's Hail Emperor Stakes. It's just a moderate tempo up the backstretch. S.W. Clarence just loping along on the lead, leads at one and a half legs. Montana Dream in second, three parts of a length. Pleasant feeling settled down in third. Testify called on for a bit of run in fourth. Copycat his fifth, followed by Chronicle S. Second to last, six lengths from the front. And about another four or five and Warren pieces the trailer with a half mile to go. S.W. Clarence with Montana Dream and trying to turn up the heat on the outside. They're going to quicken on now around the far turn. Testify with a clear bit on the outside of Pleasant feeling. Chronicle S. S and Copycat racing as a team, and it's another four lengths, and it's Warren Pisa trails the field. Now Montana Dreamin' got a nose in front from SW Clarence, Testify and Pleasant Feeling running a big race in between horses. On the inside is Copycat, Copycat's just skimming that rail as they turn for home. Chronicle S and Warren Pisa the trailer, homeward bound now, Montana Dreamin' hits the front, Testify up on the outside, Pleasant Feeling in between horses, and a game SW Clarence is coming back for more. SW Clarence, one more gear down to the inside from Montana Dreamin' and Pleasant feeling in third. The others flattening out. It is S.W. Clarence who's come back to put a neck in front. S.W. Clarence wouldn't be denied. Strides out to win it by three quarters of a leg. S.W. Clarence under Rick Wilson getting the win here. Another bit of a long shot at six to one on the front end. He was headed at the top of the stretch by Montana Dreamin'. Uh, that rival did get his head in front, but uh, fighting back was S.W. Clarence. Down on the inside after setting the pace just about every step of the way, drawing clear by a length. Montana Dreamin, who pressed hard, did attain the lead and faded just a little bit in the stretch. He was out finished by the winner, but uh, held on nicely for the second spot as the favorite. With pleasant feeling uh, running the third spot most of the way around, he did have some uh, some traffic trouble. He was forced to repeat or uh, forced repeatedly to uh, to check down on the rail, but uh, getting finally getting clear and making it into the third spot. The winner, S. W. Clarence, is a five-year-old gelding sired by Iron, bred in Pennsylvania. He's owned by the Springwater Farm and trained by Thomas Lingenfelder, ridden to victory by Rick Wilson, completing the mile in 3 16ths in 1 minute 56 and 1 5 seconds.
Completing the weekend at Laurel on Sunday, we had the Nellie Moore Stakes, a $50,000 stakes event for three and up fillies and mares going a mile and an eighth on the main track. Let's head back to Laurel now for the call of the Nellie Morse. And they're off, took him down, hopped in the air at the start, and bobbled a bit. Proud run, Meringue, gold from the west outside gate, and the Unforgiven is right there as well. Into the first turn, Meringue showing the way from Proud Run and gold from the west. The Unforgiven, Holiday Ball, Poco's Dream Girl, and Tooken Down and Ghost Colony. And seven lengths now separates first to last with seven and one half for longs to go. Meringue's out there on the lead. Meringue leading it by a half length. Proud Run in second, gold from the west third. Holiday Ball rating along in fourth. The Unforgiven is a close fifth, three lengths from the pace, then took down in Poco's Dream Girl and Ghost Colony. As they move up the backstretch now, just about six furlongs remaining. Meringue, out where she likes to be, on the lead, has it by a neck. Some pressure coming from Proud Run. Gold from the west out there, three deep, and Holiday Ball is tucked in on the inside. The Unforgiven racing a close fifth, and it's a break of two and a half. Tooken down Poco's Dream Girl and Ghost Colony is last of all, about eight lengths off the pacemakers. Proud Run turning up the pressure on Meringue with a half mile to go. Gold from the west is keeping pace and lurking strong on the outside. The Unforgiven Holiday Ball now put to a ride. Then it's back to Tooken Down who's running on from four lengths off the lead. Puku's Dream Girl and Ghost Colony is the trailer. Three-eighths of a mile to go. Proud run. Gold from the west. The Unforgiven Tooken Down looming large despite that poor start and Tooken Down is running on from third. Poco's Dream Girl got a little bit of a live shot to win this one. Four lengths off the lead in the blue cap as they turn for home now. Proud run. Gold from the west. Tooken down. Poco's Dream Girl looking for a seam to run through right behind them, then the Unforgiven. Poco's Dream Girl guided to a big opening on the inside of Proud Rum, and here comes Poco's Dream Girl charging through with Pino. Poco's Dream Girl comes charging through past the 16th pole on the rail, and it's Poco's Dream Girl going on to win in a nice prize. 13 to 1 by two and a half length. Proud Run was second. Goes from the west and took him down. Pocho's Dream Girl. We've uh, seen a lot of her in New York. She's been in and out of New York several times this year. Had a little bit of a disappointing season, but uh, allowed to go off at almost 14 to 1 on Sunday, getting a come from behind win by three lengths under Mario Pino. Proud run, who chased every step of the way early, was run down for the. Uh, for the win here, she was involved in the early pace, did attain the lead, was run down by Pocho's Dream Girl. Heavy favorite gold from the rest. West ran a rather one-paced effort. She was uh, she was wide a little bit. She was pressing early, did weaken a bit in the stretch as the even money favorite. The winner, Pocho's Dream Girl, is a five-year-old uh, Florida-bred mare. She is sired by Fortunate Prospect owned by Robert Masterson, trained by Alan Goldberg, and ridden to victory by, by Mario Pino. Completing the mile and an eighth distance in one minute, 51 seconds flat. We are going to pause now for a brief break. When we come back, we'll have racing action to bring to you from throughout the Midwest, the Far West, and of course, Aqueduct as well. Please stay with us. Thoroughbred and harness information, along with live races, informative shows, weekly review of races, and handicapping analysis. It's what's on the Capital OTB television network 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The programming day begins with the previous day replays of thoroughbred and harness races. Then on weekdays, Capital OTB presents the Morning Line Show, with our public handicapper reviewing the day's featured thoroughbred and harness track with his selections and latest changes. On Naira race days, Capital OTB airs Handicapping Analysis with Dick Powell and Gene Wood. They take an in-depth look back on the previous day's Naira card and highlight particular races. Also, they look at the current race day program. From noon until midnight, it's non-stop racing action beginning with Naira replays to Talking Horses. Then the latest day's changes to continuous racing action with top tracks from around the country, such as Calder. Churchill Downs and Louisiana Downs, and concluding with four hours of live harness races from Yonkers, Vernon, Saratoga, Northfield, Buffalo, and many more. After the nighttime action, network shows entries for all of the tracks that you can wager on the next day. Capital OTB also offers weekly informative shows such as Horses and Courses. Gene Wood takes a look back at all of the top stakes races from around the country. Down the stretch, with Mark Casano and Mike Veach, is an in-depth look back at previous week's stakes races, along with upcoming races, 
Also live interviews with owners and trainers, then your phone calls about the sport of racing. Another feature is Track Facts Live with Tom Amello and Nick Kling. They have a unique approach to handicapping. It helps guide the better in making a more knowledgeable selection. They too invite the racing fan to call and ask questions. Make Capital OTB your choice for the most complete coverage in thoroughbred and harness racing. Welcome back everyone. Next we're going to be heading out to Turf Paradise where on Sunday the featured event of the day was the Christmas Futurity. This is a $75,000 added event for two-year-olds going six and a half furlongs on the main track. Let's head out to Arizona now for the call of the Christmas Futurity. And they're off in the Christmas Futurity. It was a perfect start. Millie Wake and Knoxville, the first two out on the outside. Unusual Cool is a close up third with Strip. Our best man, fifth in the early stages. And now Under Surveillance is moving through down at the rail along with Gillies Ghazi. Then it's brushed by the best, about four lengths off the lead. 17 Candles is next, two clear of Devils Paid. It is a distance back to Bugs, a governor at the back. Down the back stretch and Knoxville shows the way, leading by a half length. On the outside, Strip is right there in second. Gillies Ghazi a close up third. Under surveillance down at the rail is in fourth position, two and a half lengths off the lead. Outside of that, it's unusual cool. He has three and a half to make up. Gillies Ghazi in between horses. 17 candles is caught about five wide and has five lengths to make up with a quarter of a mile to go. On the inside, it's Knoxville and Strip. They're stride for stride at the top of the lane. 17 candles on the far outside brushed by the best in the white blinkers there's an eighth of a mile to go and Knoxville's clear 17 candles is cutting into the margin on the outside Knoxville short lead 17 candles on the outside 17 candles has the momentum and gets the lead late and 17 candles goes on to win the Christmas Futurity 17 candles, five wide on the stretch, but uh, making up all the ground he needed on the pace setter Knoxville to get the win here. A very game effort by this horse coming very, very wide, as you saw into the stretch. Knoxville holding on very nicely, brushed by the best, making an inside move into the show spot, brushed by the best, uh, rallied between horses very nicely, ducked down into the rail, but did not have quite enough time left to make up into the play spot. 17 candles, very impressive drawing away on the outside under Vince Guerra. 17 Candles is uh, five for five now at Turf Paradise, a very impressive performance, which indi is uh, indicated by his heavy favoritism in this race. 17 Candles went off at uh, well below even money in this event. He is uh, 17 Candles, a two-year-old Bay Colt sired by Cien Fuegos. He was bred in Texas by Sally Kelly. He's owned by Mac and Sandra Hall trained by Lyman Rollins, and as I mentioned, ridden to victory by Vince Guerra, completing the six and a half furlongs in one minute, 16 and one fifth seconds. Next, we're going to be heading to the fairgrounds where the feature race on Saturday was the Pago Hop Stakes. This was a $100,000 added event for three-year-old fillies, originally carded on the turf at about one mile. It did, uh, did come off the turf because of weather conditions. It was run on a sloppy main track at a mile. Let's head down to the fairgrounds for the call of Saturday's Pago Hop Stakes. They're off in the Pango Hop. Cosmic Wing on the inside into Rested Dreams at the rail. Those two vie for the lead. Now they're joined by Lucky again, Stars Games. And on the outside, Melody Queen as they make their way around the first turn. Arrested Dreams has the lead by a half. Cosmic Wing, right there in second, Lucky again. In third by a half, and Melody Queen is fourth on the outside. The Happy Hopper next in fifth. Price A Rose is sixth. Five lengths back, Judas Gamble seventh on the inside. Stars Games is eighth. Then comes Naughty Crown, and Riviera Colleen is the trailer. Down the back stretch, Arrested Dreams. Has the lead by two. Cosmic Wing, the happy hopper on between horses. And on the outside, Lucky again is fourth, about four off the lead. Four lengths back, Riviera Colleen. And then it's about six. Back to Judas Gamble. Now to the top of the stretch. Arrested Dreams. 
has the lead by some two and a half. Cosmic Wing is next. The Happy Hopper on the outside, then Riviera Colleen. They go to the 16th pole in the Pango Hop. And Martin goes to work on Arrested Dreams. She's in front by two and a half. Then comes the Happy Hopper, but Arrested Dreams, a front running style to win the Pango Hop. Arrested Dreams returning to her best form here with a win on the front end in very impressive fashion. She dueled early uh, throughout the early portion of the event with Cosmic Wing, was able to draw off open eclair two and a half length lead by the top of the stretch and was not headed any further than that as the 12 to 10 favorite. The Happy Hopper making a bit of ground up late after uh, settling a little bit early, making a three wide rally, ducking down inside the winner and getting up into the play spot third spot was Cosmic Wing, who uh, did duel early with Arrested Dreams, a very ga game effort by this one to hold on for the third spot. The winner, Arrested Dreams, is a three-year-old Dark Bay or Brown filly. She's sired by DeHare, bred in Kentucky by John B. Crook and Jeffrey Morris, getting the win here for owners Lamarck, Powell, and Roussel, trained by Louis Roussel III. Ridden to victory by Eddie Martin Jr. And as I mentioned, completing the distance on a very sloppy racetrack, the mile distance covered in 1 minute 39 and 3 fifths seconds. Continuing with Sunday Stakes action from the fairgrounds, we have the F.W. Gaudin Hand Memorial Handicap, a $75,000 added event for three-year-olds and up sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Let's head back to the fairgrounds once more for the call of Sunday's Gaudin Memorial Handicap. They're off. Proper performer a bit in the air at the start. Grand's Halo quickly sprints for the lead. Abajo into second and Gone Hollywood is third on the outside. Try and express up into fourth. Master of Fox Sounds fifth along the inside. Then comes Crucible in sixth and Fallen Halo is seventh. Smoldering Heart next racing in eighth. What a flashy actor is next, and four lengths back is proper performer. And moving now to the top of the stretch, Abajo on the outside, and Grand's Halo. Gone Hollywood is next, then comes Try and Express, and Crucible on the far outside. Master of Foxhounds now in the picture, and they're in mid-stretch, Abajo in front by four. Battle shaping up for place. On the outside, proper performer coming on, along with Crucible, way on the outside, smoldering heart. It is Abajo holding on to win it. And a photo for place. Abajo under Robbie Alvarado getting the win here. Very impressive fashion uh, for this horse on or near the lead every step of the way. Uh, pressing the early pace hard behind Grand's halo and uh, then taking over the lead, drawing out to a three-length win at the top of the stretch, holding on very gamely as Smoldering Heart made a huge run from well off the pace into the second spot here, just a neck in front of proper performer, also closing very hard at long odds from well off the pace, both Smoldering Heart and proper performer making huge moves very, very late, but not able to run down a very game Abajo on the front end. The winner, Abajo, is a Florida-bred four-year-old uh, Bay Colt, sired by Robin Dancer. He is owned by the High Lake Broad Racing Stable and trained by Scott Blasi, ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado and completing the distance of six furlongs in one minute, 11 seconds flat. Next, we're going to be heading out to Hollywood Park, where a stakes series was held this weekend, including a couple of grade ones for two-year-olds. We are going to start with Saturday's racing, kicking things off with the Dahlia Handicap. This is a grade two event for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. They're going for a $150,000 purse, the distance a mile and a sixteenth over the turf course. Let's head out to Hollywood Park now for the call of Saturday's Dahlia Handicap. Racing. 
Cyrillic the first out from Lady at Peace, followed by Little Italy Country Garden and Laxa. At the completion of a 16th, Lady at Peace looms up and goes to the lead from Cyrillic, followed by Little Italy. Country Garden fourth one off the rail and Laxa two lengths last as they string out over seven lengths, with Gomez sending Lady at Peace clear at the 7 8th turn by more than three lengths. Cyrillic is second, Little Italy third. A length further back to Country Garden and another length and a half to Laxa. Now it's a six length lead for Lady at Peace. Six furlongs to go. She heads to the back stretch, a commanding leader from Cyrillic, who's joined on the outside by Little Italy. Two and a half to Country Garden, and three and a half lengths last is Lexa. In the back stretch at the five eighths pole in the Dahlia, and the lead for Lady at Peace is cut to two lengths as Little Italy and Cyrillic move closer. Three further back to Country Garden, and five lengths off last of the quintet is Lexa. Approaching the half mile, Lady at Peace just a length and a half from Little Italy and Cyrillic stride by stride. About three further further back to Country Garden and five lengths off last of all Vaxa. No appreciable change in the pattern, although Cyrillic's able to work clear of Little Italy at this juncture. Around the second turn at the 5 16th, Lady at Peace a length and a half. Cyrillic second, Country Garden looms to third, Little Italy beaten. She's about to be passed on the inside by Lexa, who gives away a seven length start. Top of the stretch, 3 16ths to go. Lady at Peace about two lengths from Cyrillic and a length and a half to Country Garden clear of Lexa. Coming to the eighth pole in the Dahlia, still Lady at Peace, a length and a quarter. Cyrillic's making a little ground and two lengths to Country Garden. Garden, but Lady at Peace is fending them off. Lady at Peace is going to lead throughout and win the Dahlia. Lady at Peace kept going with the whip a length and a half. Cyrillic second, a half length, Country Garden third. Lady at Peace getting the win here under Garrett Gomez. Very impressive performance over the uh, over Cyrillic. Uh, Garrett Gomez riding very well here on the front end. Opened a big lead, slowing down the early pace and controlling it from there on. The uh, early fractions of 24.97, 48.36, dawdling fractions for this quality of, uh, of filly and mare. But a very, very cagey ride on the front end by Garrett Gomez. Cyrillic uh, chasing the early pace, early dropped back a little bit and uh, made another move at the winner but was not able to con contend with her as uh, the winner went under the finish line a length and a quarter to the best. Country Garden rallying from well off the pace into the third spot here. The winner, Lady at Peace, is a three-year-old filly. She is sired by Lord at War. She was bred in Kentucky by Mr. and Mrs. Stoutberg. She is owned by the Always Always Believe Incorporated and trained by Julio Canani, ridden to victory, as I mentioned, by Garrett Gomez. Completing the mile in the 16th over the turf course in 1 minute 41 and 2 fifths seconds. Continuing with stakes action on Saturday, we have the Corona Handicap, a $75,000 event for three-year-olds and up, sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Let's head back out to Hollywood for the call of the Corona Handicap. Racing. Teresa's Tizzy springs out brilliantly from the outside to lead by two lengths from Queen of Wilshire, followed in third by Mountain Medley on the inside of Stop Traffic, Debit Account, Very Deep People's Princess next. Two further back, fun all over, with Lady Tap four lengths last. Teresa's Tizzy almost joined by Queen of Wilshire to the inside. There's a neck between them at the half mile. Mountain Medley three quarters of a length back, third on the rail. About three quarters to stop traffic, fourth entering the turn. A length debit account planted wide. Two and a half fun all over inside People's Princess. That pair seven from the action. Lady Tap two lengths back at the tail as they circle the turn in the Corona. At the 5.16th pole, Teresa's Tizzy by ahead to Queen of Wilshire. Two and a half to stop traffic, a length and a half mountain medley on the inside of debit account. They're followed by fun all over People's Princess. Very wide back to second last and Lady Tap the trailer. Teresa's Tizzy in front getting away again by more than a length coming to the eighth pole. Now she's better than two in front from Queen of Wilshire. Fun all over. Then Mountain Medley followed by Stop Traffic. But Teresa's Tizzy blazing away at the 16th pole. She'll give Lafitte a triple on the afternoon. Great win. Teresa's Tizzy by four lengths. Fun all over. Second, third. Very close between Queen of Wilshire and Lady Tap. Teresa's Tizzy under Lafitte Pinkai, who continues to ride very well. He is in contention for the riding title at the fall meeting here at Hollywood Park. And uh, after attaining his, uh, his 8,834th victory, continues to ride very, very well on the West Coast. Front running victory on this one, three and a half lengths to the best of the late charging fun all over under Alex Solis. 
Queen of Wilshire rallying, or uh, moving rather well early and fading just a little bit late. She did uh, show good speed, dueling hard, and uh, held on very gamely for the third spot at long odds. Favorite in here, stop traffic. A uh, major grade one stakes winning mare did find herself in a chasing position early and uh, weakened a bit in the stretch, not having very much left for the drive. The winner, Teresa's Tizzy, is a gray or roan mare. She's five years old, bred in California. Sired by C's Tizzy, she's owned by Balestri Johnson Leach et al. She's trained by Noble Three Wit, ridden, as I mentioned, to victory by Lafitte Ping Kai Jr., completing the six furlong distance in a very quick 109 and 3 fifth seconds. Next, we're going to head to the highlighted event on Saturday's card, the Grade 1 Hollywood Futurity. This is a $200,000 event for two-year-olds, going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. We have a number of colts coming back off of Breeders' Cup uh, juvenile races here. Let's head back out to Hollywood Park now for the call of Saturday's Hollywood Futurity. Racing. One of the first into stride, purely Cozine. Malabar Gold, not all that well away. He's starting to make ground between horses to second. He's chasing that leader out of the stretch. High yield, three wide. Third, Cosine planted four wide. Back on the fence comes Cameron Pass and Captain Steve's the early trailer. Malabar Gold is over racing a little at the 7 8 pole. He's very keen to get on with it. He kicks away by three lengths now from Purely Cozine. Three further back, Cameron Pass coming through on the inside to third. High yield is a joint fourth, three deep as Captain Steve slices through between that pair and Pat Day takes Cosine back to the tail of the field. Della Husse trying to saddle Malabar Gold down a little. He's going by the 5 8 pole with a four-length advantage over Purely Cozine who leaves the rail. Captain Steve's coming through in the red and yellow silks to third. Ahead to Cameron Pass, fourth on his inside. High yield still a little bit wide. He's five lengths from the leader at the half mile and Cosine is biding his time four lengths last. Malabar Gold just a length and a half in front. Captain Steve's moving up smartly to the inside as they enter the turn. Captain Steve and now High Yield taking off three wide. They've gone straight past Malabar Gold. As they come by the 5 16th pole, it's High Yield by a neck. Captain Steve in second position. High Yield pulling about a half length clear of him and they are now eight lengths clear of the rest of the field headed by the long shot Cameron Pass with Cosine going through on the inside to fourth at the top of the stretch and Captain Steve on the inside now has the lead. He gets away by a length coming by the eighth pole from high yield. Ten lengths away, Cosine through on the inside of Cameron Pass, but a 16th from home and the Hollywood Futurity belongs to Captain Steve. Captain Steve racing away to win by three and a half lengths. High yield second and eight or nine lengths to Cosine third. Captain Steve getting the win here. This is a uh, this is an impressive win here by this f this two-year-old colt drawing away by four lengths. He had uh, been sitting off the early pace set by Malabar Gold, who uh, went out to show the early lead, faded rather abruptly after uh, fairly quick fractions. Malabar Gold, of course, had been very impressive in his maiden win last time out. High yield getting the second spot here. This is a horse who had uh, run very well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but uh, had not quite been able to get the win there that day. Ran very nicely in the money, but uh, disappointing effort here coming back, not quite able to beat Captain Steve, who has since come back and put together a couple of good wins off of Breeders' Cup uh, disappointments. Finishing in the third spot, closing a ton of ground late, but not able to, uh, not able to contend with the winners was Kozine. This is a uh, youngster who had also been very impressive in his maiden effort last time out. Captain Steve is a two-year-old chestnut colt. He is sired by Fly So Free, bred in Kentucky by Roger Laubach. He is owned by Michael Pegram, trained by Bob Baffert. It uh, does appear that Captain Steve will be heading down to the fairgrounds over the uh, over the winter time. Uh, the Captain Steve, it has been announced, will be joining Pegram's barn at the fairgrounds. He will be taking the uh, New Orleans route to the Kentucky Derby. That is obviously their ultimate goal with this youngster. And uh, Looks like he's handled the stretch out distances very, very nicely, so I'm sure we'll be seeing more of this, uh, this nice looking chestnut colt. Captain Steve completes the mile in a 16th distance in 1 minute 43 and 1 fifth seconds. 
We are going to pause for a brief break now. When we come back, we'll have one more race from Hollywood Park to bring to you. The return to the races of uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies runner-up Surfside. Very impressive winner in her maiden, uh, maiden effort here at Saratoga. Followed it up with a couple of quick wins. She's trying to get back into the winner's circle in the Hollywood Starlet on, sun on uh, Sunday at Hollywood Park. We're going to pause for a brief break, and when we come back, we'll see how Surfside fared at Hollywood Park on Sunday. On behalf of the staff and management of Capital OTB, we would like to wish you a happy holiday season. Capital OTB will be closed Christmas Day, but we're back in action Sunday with a full card of racing. Stakes action from Aqueduct on Sunday will consist of the Grade 3 $100,000 added Gallon Fox Handicap and the Grade 3 $75,000 added Graves End Handicap, both for three-year-olds and up. Calder offers a grade two $150,000 La Provayon handicap for fillies and mares three and up. And at the fairgrounds, it's a $100,000 woodchopper stakes for three-year-olds. Catch all of the exciting action this Sunday at any Capital OTB location. Welcome back, everyone. Next, we're going to be heading back out to Hollywood Park for Sunday's Grade 1 Hollywood Starlet for two-year-old fillies. This is a $200,000 added event. They're going a mile and a sixteenth, and it features the return to the races of major graded stakes winner Surfside from the Wayne Lucas operation. Let's head back out to Hollywood Park now for the call of the Hollywood Starlet. Park for the Starlet. Racing. She's classy away best in the orange silks from Surfside. Classic Olympio only about the fourth away. She's on the outside of Humble Clerk and Abby Girls going up on the extreme outside. They're covered by only two and a half lengths. Classic Olympio back at the tail now. And short of a mile to go, she's classy as a head in front, but Surfside's going through to her inside. And somewhat surprisingly, perhaps Surfside leads past the seven eighths pole by a head from She's Classy and two lengths to Abby Girl. Two lengths to Classic Olympio working two and a half clear of Humble Clerk. In the back stretch, three quarters of a mile to go. And the long shot, She's Classy again, again has the lead narrowly. Surfside going through on the inside almost level again. Abby Girl with the sit on that pair is a length and a half back third. A similar margin to Classic Olympio, and Humble Clerk is now six lengths back, struggling to stay in touch in the middle stages. The field covered by nine, a half a mile to go in the Starlet. Surfside matching strides with She's Classy. Abby Girl a length and a half back third and travelling nicely. A similar margin to Classic Olympio, and Humble Clerk is five lengths back at the tail of the field. With three eighths to go, it's a great tussle between Surfside and She's Classy, with Abby Girl inching closer, three wide up within a half length now. Four further back to Classic Olympio, who seemingly can't quite accelerate th with them at a crucial time. And last of all, as they turn for home, Humble Clerk in the stretch. And Surfside quickly disposes of She's Classy and kicks away by more than two. Abby Girl on the outside's running home pretty well, but Surfside has the ears cocked. Coming by the eighth pole, doing it beautifully. Surfside five in front now from She's Classy, who's actually holding Abby Girl for second. But Surfside's in another class. Surfside, coast home. Second, she's classy. Third home, Abby Girl, followed by... Surfside, she's able to do it, returning to her best form, drawing away by, a sev by seven lengths under Pat Day to an easy win here. Uh, she was challenged early. Pat Valenzuela decided that she wasn't going to let the speedy Surfside get away. She sent, he sent She's Classy up to the front or uh, in the contentious position right alongside of Surfside, but uh, Surfside was able to draw away and win from that one. Uh, She's Classy did hang on for a very good second place here by a, uh, a shortening length over Abby Girl, who was moving well late. She, uh, she did give Cory Nakatani a little bit of trouble early. She was a little bit fresh in the early going, rallying nicely, though, just falling short of the place finisher. The winner at Surfside is a two-year-old Bay filly. She's owned and bred by the Overbrook Farm of Kentucky, sired by Seattle Slough out of the uh, champion race mare racing filly 
Flanders. She is trained by Wayne Lucas, who has mentioned her as a possible contender uh, for the Santa Anita Derby next spring. Of course, one of the major prep races for the Kentucky Derby. So it looks as though Wayne Lucas is considering uh, shifting this very sharp filly into uh, competition against Colts and Geldings next year, possibly pointing her for the Kentucky Derby rather than the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, remains to be seen if this will all pan out. But uh, Wayne Lucas has had success in the past with his uh, fillies that he decides to point into competition against the males, of course, winning colors, having won the Kentucky Derby for Wayne Lucas off of very good impressive efforts out on the West Coast against males in prep races. So uh, certainly something that uh, Lucas has had some experience with doing and uh, Surfside looking certainly like uh, much the best out on the West Coast in grade one competition in Sunday's Hollywood Starlet. As I mentioned, uh, Surfside was ridden to victory by Pat Day. She covered the mile in his 16th in 1 minute 43 and 2 fifth seconds in a very easy victory. Finishing up, we're going to be heading back to New York for the weekend stakes action here. Starting things off on Saturday, the Grade 3 Ladies Handicap, a $100,000 event for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going a mile and a quarter on the main track. This race turned out to be the Battle of the Bells as Bell Cherie coming off of a couple of very impressive wins here in New York is stretching out in distance, taking on Strolling Bell off of a very impressive allowance win a couple of weeks back. Let's head down to the to Aqueduct rather for the call of the Ladies Handicap. And they're off. And it is Sazerac Jazz who will go for the early lead. A snit is there. Rap and dance on the outside. At the rail is a strolling bell. As they come past the stands for the first time, Sazerac Jazz a leading here by a length. Snit is second, Rap and Dance on the outside in third. Strolling Bell down on the inside running fourth. Brush Tallery is fifth. Then Bell Cherie in a gap of three to the trailer. Maiden Fair in seventh. The open four and three. Sazerac Jazz. Leading into the clubhouse turn, it's Sazerac Jazz by a length, and Snit is on the outside in second. Then Strolling Bell, running in third. The favorite, Bell Cherie, is fourth, four lengths from the lead. Then it's a gap of two and a half, back to Brushed Hallery in fifth, Rap and Dance, and Maiden Fair. The half mile went in 48 and three, and now they're moving up the back stretch, and it is Sazerac Jazz holding on to the lead here by three quarters of a length. Snit is in between horses running in second. And on the outside is Bell Cherie. At the rail is Strolling Bell. It's two and a half lengths to Brushed Hallery. Then comes Maiden Fair. And trailing now is Rap and Dance. Three quarters, one 13 and one. And Sazerac Jazz continues to lead as the field moves around the far turn. Bell Cherie now getting closer in second. Strolling Bell is third. Maiden Fair has uh, taken fourth. Then comes Brush Tallery, and now the field is at the top of the stretch. And it is a Sazerac Jazz and Bell Cherie, Bell Cherie, and here comes Strolling Bell on the outside. Now it's three of them across the track. Sazerac Jazz, Strolling Bell, Bell Cherie, Strolling Bell is in front as they move for the 16th pole. Strolling Bell by three lengths. Maiden Fair taking second. It will be Strolling Bell to win the ladies' handicap. Maiden Fair was second. Sazerac Jazz finished third. Strolling Bell getting the lead here uh, just at the top of the stretch and was able to draw away. A lot of early pace in this race. Sazerac Jazz, a very, very quick horse, setting things up nicely for the stalking trip for Strolling Bell. She's a filly that earlier in her career had shown quite a bit of speed, but it looks as though they have taught her to rate very kindly behind horses. After uh, her last effort, which was a uh, coming from just off the pace effort behind Sazerac Jazz, this time taking the lead from that one, drawing away to a length and three-quarter win over the late charging long shot Maiden Fair, a filly who has been progressing through through claiming and allowance conditions for uh, for Christina Dupps, her trainer, doing a very nice job getting her prepared for grade three stakes competition here. Sazerac Jazz holding on very nicely for the third spot after setting the early pace. Early, early fractions were contested with Snit, uh, who was scratched out of the, uh, the Nellie Morse down in uh, Laurel to enter this grade three competition and uh, showed a little bit of early speed and did disappoint late in the race. Belle Cherie, who did go off as the 
the uh, as the even money or less than even money favorite odds on did finish in the fourth spot she rallied after having a little bit of trouble uh, getting bumped around a little bit on the first turn this was her first try at this length of the, this kind of a length race a mile and a quarter perhaps a little bit longer than she wants to go but she did look sharp rallying late uh, did flatten out a little bit late in the going Strolling Bell, the winner, is a three-year-old strolling along filly. She was bred in Kentucky by the Fiesta Racing Stable. She's owned by the Red Oak Stable. Trained by John Kimmel, getting the win here under Herb Castillo, Jr. She covers the mile and a quarter distance in 2.04 and 3.5 seconds. Finishing out today's program, we have the Damon Runyon Stakes from Sunday at Aqueduct. This is a restricted race for New York breads. The purse is $50,000. It's for two-year-olds going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head back to the Aqueduct Inner Track for the call of Sunday's Damon Runyon. And they're off. Spectacular Spencer broke well. On the outside is Curtains. Storm the Gate is there. Curtains will get to the front. Spectacular Spencer and on the rail, Consigliore. Storm the Gate is on the outside. And it's a gap of two and a half to the trailer. Duplicitous in fifth. Around the clubhouse turn, it's Curtains leading here by a length. Conciliore and Spectacular Spencer right together second and third. Then comes a Storm the Gate and Duplicitous. The opening quarter mile in 23 and three. Now they're moving up the back stretch with the Curtains leading here by about a length. And Spectacular Spencer is second. Conciliare at the rail in third. Storm the Gate the outside fourth. Duplicitous still trails in fifth. They're midway up the back stretch. The half went in 48 and four. It's Curtains in front by a length. Curtains leading as they approach the far turn. Spectacular Spencer is second. And then comes a storm the gate and conciliare and duplicitous remains in fifth and they're still chasing curtains curtains in front but gaining ground on the outside there goes storm the gate curtains holding on to the lead storm the gate on the outside and between horses spectacular spencer conciliare now switches to the outside duplicitous is fifth three quarters one thirteen and four it's curtains by a length and a half spectacular spencer is second conciliare on the outside now moving into second but it's curtains holding on to the lead conciliare is second spectacular spencer is third and it's a wire to wire win for curtains in the damon runyon Curtains getting the win here on the front end. Another good front end winner here. This one uh, hustled out early under Mike Luzzi, was able to draw clear, and not really headed until late in the stretch as he was tiring just a little bit with Consigliori making up quite a bit of ground after having checked in the second turn and uh, making a nice bit of a bit of a move into the stretch here, but not able to catch winner curtain spectacular spencer showed a little bit of early speed showing good pace but uh, tiring just a bit weakening in the stretch into the third spot the winner curtains is a two-year-old new york bred sired by distinctive pro he was bred by the double brook farm owned by eugene melnick trained by michael hushen ridden to victory by mike luzzi completing the mile in a 16th distance in one minute 44 and four fifth seconds that wraps up our look back at this past week's stakes action. Of course, we're going to have a rather slow week to bring to you next week as Christmas uh, holidays cause a little bit of a break in the action of a number of racing tracks, of course, including New York. Naira will be uh, quiet for the rest of the week now and uh, until Sunday when uh, we return to the races on the 26th at Naira with a pair of graded stakes events, the Gallon Fox going long on the inner track and the Gravesend sprinting on the inner track. So. Uh, pair of nice sharp uh, races to finish out the racing season. Of course, we'll also have the Malibu to bring to you next week. The Malibu, a grade one event for three-year-olds out on the West Coast at Hollywood Park. Malibu Stakes has been, uh, been a very important race over the last few years, setting up a number of horses for their four-year-old seasons beginning in the, with the Stroob Stakes out on the West Coast. So we will have those races and as well as a few other stakes races to bring to you next week. Thank you everyone very much for joining me today. We uh, would like to extend to you the uh, wishes that you all have a happy and safe holiday. We hope that, uh, that you have enjoyed the programming and we hope that you will be back next week to watch Horses and Courses keeping up on the rest of the stakes action from throughout the country. Thanks for joining me. I'm Jean Wood. We'll be back next week.